So recently, I wanted to add this feature. Yeah. But that doesn't come on the uh, Langmire Systems machine torch holder. So, you can build your own. And uh, there will be a link in the description of this video to the build plans for this machine torch holder. Now, I'm going to go through step by step showing the entire process how I built it um, in this video right now. So because I found a whole bunch of random sized pieces of aluminum, I had to square them up. And I don't recommend this method for shortening a piece of aluminum. Uh, if you got a bandsaw, use that. Or, <laughs> because the problem with this method is the chips can't escape. I'm not running coolant because, you know, I don't have coolant set up. And um, the RPMs I was running should have coolant. That's why I loaded up the, uh, the end mill there. I love this YG1, it's their AL Power uh, end mill. It's, uh, it's designed for aluminum. You can see there it started to pull out of the collar a little bit. Um, I thought I had it really tight, but I did notice it started to slip, so I caught that in time. I'm not a professional machine disguise. I'm a, I'm a machine designer. So I do like to, uh, if I got more than one hole in the same location on multiple parts, I'm going to do them all before I move the machine. That's going to give you consistency. So I do like doing that. So I put this, this hole in all four parts um, before I ever move the X. And the Y is locked. Um, that's going to help you with your consistency. So then at this point, uh, I went and did the other hole and I started tapping. I'm using a YG1 spiral flute tap. I picked these things up off Amazon for like $8. They are mind-blowingly good. Um, I've used this quarter 20 tap probably more than any other tap I've ever owned, and it's still cutting like brand new. I like to mark the top of all of my parts just so I don't get confused and accidentally mess a part up. So here I'm using the boring bar to scribe a half circle onto the part. Now I do that so I can come back with an end mill and hog out a bunch of material. If you start with a really tiny hole and you try to open it up using the boring bar, you know, 50 thousandths at a time, you're going to be here for days. But this method here is much faster. Now that there's a scribed line, I just mill out all the material and overall I'm leaving about an eighth of an inch behind so that I can come back with the boring bar and clean it all up. So that's the method I suggest. You could do it without a boring bar. Um, you could drill one big humongous hole, which would be kind of tough, and then cut it in half. But, eh, or you could shape it by hand, you know. There's guys that do that. Where there is a will, there is a way. Here I'm just marking a spot on my drill for depth. Um, I could have literally just set the depth um, on my machine. There's a, there's a, a Z stop on the quill. But... Um, I just made a mark. You could, yeah. <laughs> Once again, I'm using the, uh, the YG1 spiral flute tap. This is for the set screw holes that are going to hold the laser uh, markers in position. So now I've got to mill the slot that locates this uh, fixed jaw on the spine. Um, I'm going to reuse the, uh, the spine on the uh, torch holder that came with the table just because I know it fits on the Z axis just perfect. I love the fit up and uh, why try to, you know, make one more part that you don't have to make. So you can totally use, um, salvage the, uh, the spine on your existing. Um. Now, if you end up going with a different type of laser pointer, your hole might be a different size. You'll have to address that um, before you start drilling, check the body of your laser. Also, try to keep it precise because if you got too much slop in there, um, when you tighten the set screw, it's going to make your laser move quite a bit. So you want it, you want it pretty good. Um, so now I've got all the parts done and I'm assembling it. Now, it would have been real cool if I had uh, sanded the uh, anodize off and you know polished that spine to be uh, polished aluminum like everything else. But... I didn't think about that until right now as I'm uh, <laughs> narrating this video. So, overall, you know, I just left it red anodized. Um, it, no reason other, you know. Some people might like it that way, others might not. But some people probably think it's really overkill that I polished 
any of it. Uh, but polished surfaces uh, will expel um, the uh, slag that blows up. I'm also not an electronics guru. Um, I know just enough to be dangerous. So here I'm stripping the wires and these lasers have the smallest wire I've ever worked with. I'm not used to working with wires so small. You gotta be really careful because it's stuff just wants to break um, when you try to strip it. Um, so I wire these in parallel, uh, not series. Um, I don't want to change the voltage or impedance or anything like that. Um, so I just wired them parallel, red to red, black to black. And then um, I extended them about 15 feet um, and wired them to a toggle switch because I want to be able to turn them on and off. I don't want them running all the time. They come with a battery pack, two battery packs. Um, so they'll last quite a while, um, but I, you know I want to be able to turn them on and off. So this is the world's worst soldering iron. Um, I got it from Harbor Freight. It is total junk. Um, I've done like two soldering jobs. The tip, the tip is like completely dissolving. Um, it gets way, way too hot. There's no way to control the heat. Um, it's actually so hot right now. I can't get. Um, the solder to the stick it just keeps falling off and I'm trying to the the shielding starting to melt because I got the wire so hot but I still can't get it to stick um, but I did finally get it to stick um, and uh, so I guess all's well that ends well it's just it was painful to get there and I always suggest you know shrink tube um, especially since you have a water table and water might be splashing up you know you want to keep those um, as dry as possible so it mounts the same way you know it did when you took it off. <laughs> That's the benefit of reusing the spine there, shown in red, because you know it's going to fit well. Um, and uh, so you just you know put your torch down in here. Now this uh, Everlast torch, this is actually the torch they say is made in Italy, um, where the rest of the machines made in China. Um, it's a it's an amazing torch. I was blown away. I was cutting through half inch material like butter. Um, so make sure you secure your wires. Uh, you don't want them getting caught on anything. Um, so I just followed the existing wires all the way down. And then in that back corner there, I popped the uh, plastic end cap off the tube and I drilled a little hole and I fed the wires through the tube. It's a real nice clean way to get the wires to the other side. I want my toggle switch by the laptop because when I'm moving the X and Y, I want to be able to just flip the switch and light up my bullseye and take it to the point in the table I want to start and then once I've got my location I turn it off I don't let it let it run no point in wasting batteries and yeah so I, I want it to be right there so I can be you know working on the laptop and access the switch at the same time those are the battery packs when you put those in there they fit perfect just don't push them too far in um, I you know like an idiot I push them all the way in so the wires are sticking out the other side and almost crushed the wires with the y-axis when I zeroed it out so you know be careful don't shove those all the way in I would like to upgrade to a AC to DC power supply um, but I don't have one on hand, and uh, so I didn't use it for this build. But that is on the, the list of things I would like to do, um, so I don't have to keep using batteries. Overall, um, you can find these plans on the Bex Armory website. Um, and the plans are just that, um, a seven page or six page PDF. Um, I have a, the, all the parts that you need listed there with balloons showing which parts are which. Um, the uh, following pages are fully dimensioned um, so that you can build this. Also, you may have noticed that uh, indexing jig from time to time on the table in red there. That's also available on the Bex Armory website. I want to thank you guys so much for taking your time out of your day to watch this. I hope it's helpful. I hope you, uh, you know, get a lot of use out of this video and share it with your friends who have Crossfire Pros. They may also want a machine torch holder. Also, last thing on the list here is the I am now an affiliate um, with Everlast so if you are interested in getting anything from Everlast um, click the link in this description in the description of the video and it will help me out now um, they didn't give me that plasma cutter I paid 90% of the cost they gave me a 10% off uh, because I was a influencer uh, whatever 
Um, so I still had to spend quite a bit of my hard-earned money. So I did my research, and I'm I'm 100% happy right now with this this plasma cutter. It's mind blowing. So if you're interested in picking up that, use the link in the description of this video. And uh, that will help out the channel. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I will see you later. See ya.